<clears throat> Good morning. It's nine o'clock. June eighth. It's a Tuesday. Trying to get my studio fixed up here. Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry about the shadows. That's just gonna have to be uh, dealt with today. So <clears throat> try to get something over that at some point. So, but uh, glad you guys are here. <clears throat> Sorry I missed out yesterday. Miss Joyce, good to see you are on here today. <clears throat> so everybody else <clears throat> got now the habit this morning, I guess, but that's all right. <clears throat> I see, I see your little race cars there. <laughs> Uh, that was fun. That was a good time and uh, <clears throat> definitely enjoyed my time yesterday. So sorry I was not on here. I should have posted something, but I got all excited and ended up not uh, posting anything on here. And I got a couple of messages. Hey, where you at? Where you at? And I forgot. But anyway, it was an exciting time yesterday. Got to drive a fast car and uh, had a good time. And <clears throat> so my starting time was really good on takeoff, and but uh, just didn't have quite the fastest car, I guess, out there. But that's all right. It was hammered down from the beginning and uh, had a good time. And what was really cool is once we got there, and I was signing, <clears throat> excuse me, as I was signing up to to race and signing the waiver, you know, so if I die, I'm not going to sue Bandamere or anything, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they said, uh, uh, told me that, hey, Kareth, your daughter can ride with you if you want to. And so Kareth got to ride with me. And so that was a good time. <clears throat> so she was able to video the video I put on Facebook uh, yesterday and uh, it was a lot of fun and we really enjoyed it. So we'll probably do that again another day. So, but anyway, it was gone and uh, sorry about that, but we'll, uh, we're back on it today and want to uh, get into this uh, this morning. Pray that it'll be a blessing uh, to you also, and uh, for those in our church family, our uh, chairs showed up yesterday and today, so we have a bunch of chairs, and I'll look at those today, and I know we got to screw the backs on them, and, but we'll, we'll see what we're going to do and, and uh, uh, get those uh, put together here soon, so it'd uh, be great to get all of our chairs and have them ready for Sunday, so Anyway, that's uh, some of the things going on. Um, I, I made the mistake of looking at some of the news, even the local news in, in uh, our little illustrious uh, newspaper in Fort Morgan, wrote out an article about the drag queens that were, what, a week or so ago down on Colfax, and they were uh, inviting people in to the COVID-19 vaccine clinic and uh, trying to encourage people to come and get their shot <clears throat> and uh, doing so by the drag queens uh, hanging out on the street. Um, and our society today thinks that that is normal. Uh, normal to see a man dressed up like a woman and, and uh, actually thinking that that is normal. That there is absolutely, positively, nothing normal about that, uh, and, and and it'll never be right. And uh, it, it's not right with the the drag queens thinking that that's going to bring them happiness. It's not, and uh, I, I think it's wrong too with our immoral government. Uh, do you know that they can't just mandate it, which they would love to mandate. Hey, get your shot. And that'll probably come someday. So I, I don't know if you guys saw this or not either, but Friday, last Friday, uh, the our illustrious state, Colorado, gave away a million dollar drawing for 
everybody's name that was put into the, to the basket that got their shot, that, that's immoral. That's our taxpayers' money. That, you know, I, I guarantee you, Polis didn't write that out of his private checking account. And, and here we are taking million dollars at a time and doing some illegal drawing and immoral drawing and, and, and giving away our taxpayer money. I mean, I, I, you know, Weld County. I, I mean, those idiots in Weld County, too. Uh, we all think they're so good, but they're, they're up in Weld County, and, and they, did a, they do a COVID-19 clinic next to a brewery, and they give you free beer if you get a if you get your shot. And you know, Fort Collins had a mariachi band and churros and giving away stuff, trying to convince you to to take your pill, right? You know, take your shot, and and all this is normal. And what we are standing up against this is is not normal. And and we're the immoral ones, and we're the ones that. Uh, wouldn't wear the masks and how immoral we were and and uh, how mean and thoughtless we are to uh, not wear the masks and 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 how rebellious we are and how carnal we are as as believers today uh, to not obey the government and do what they tell us to do and oh boy and and we have become. <clears throat> We have become those that are that are uh, out of line, and and we're not normal anymore anymore, and and so, uh, and we're the immoral ones. But you know, just keep standing, keep doing what we need to do, and uh, that's just what we're going to do. So, and God, <clears throat> God, you're right, Angie. I, I mean, God gives us an immune system. I mean that that is you know what what, what we do and and uh, um, trust you know there there is a point where we got to trust the Lord and quit living in fear and just get out and do what we're supposed to do and 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 it is somewhat getting back to normal in some ways but normal now is you got to have that shot before you can um, be normal. And, and you're, you're right, Paula too. I mean, it's, we're, we're turning into Sodom and Gomorrah right in front of our eyes and, and, uh, <clears throat> doesn't give us a right to change. We just need to keep doing the right thing. And, and, uh, you know, don't let the anger take over and, and the, you know, the, the thoughts that come with that, <clears throat> but let's, uh, continue to, if anything, just let it, make us uh, stronger in our faith and, and bolder in our faith to go out and tell others about the truth of Christ. And, and that's what we need to do. And, <clears throat> and know that God is always faithful and, and he'll take care of this. And we might think that we're, we're then the minority, but we're not, and not with God. Because look at First Chronicles chapter five. I read this this morning and, and uh, First Chronicles 5, and, and I want to read this uh, short passage here, uh, starting with verse 18. <clears throat> the sons of Reuben and the Gadites and half the tribe of Manasseh, uh, of valiant men, men able to bear buckler with sword and to shoot with bow and skillful in war, were four and forty thousand seven hundred and three score that went out to war. So, yeah, 44,760 that went out to war, okay? And they made war with the Hagarites, with Jeter and Nephish and Nodab. And they were helped against them, and the Hagarites were delivered into their hand, and all that were with them, for they cried to God in the battle, and he was entreated of them because they put their trust in him. And they took away their cattle of their camels, 50,000, and of the sheep, 250,000, and of asses, 2,000, and of men, 100,000. For there fell down many slain because the war was of God, and they dwelt in their steads until the captivity. Uh, we are completely safe in God's hands and as long as, as God's fighting the battle, right? <clears throat> so we need to... Uh, victory comes to those that are faithful, and and 
we are the majority when we have God on our side. And, and the, the two things that, <clears throat> that I tried to emphasize in this was that uh, it tells us that um, and there were helped against them and the Hagarites were delivered into the hand and all that were with him for they cried to God in the battle and he was entreated of them. And then last thing, because the war was of God. <clears throat> so what, what's the war? What, what is the war that we have? Well, the, the war right now is the war against the immorality. The, the war right now is against the, 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 the degeneration of our, of our country and our, in our society and our culture. And, and, so how do we change that? Well, you, Christ is the one that changes it. And <clears throat> the thing that we need to understand is he does that one heart at a time. And what he wants us to do is be faithful and be faithful at telling people about Christ and, and standing for the word of God and telling people that it's wrong and calling our government officials and telling them you need to vote against these kinds of things and don't promote this. And you know, in our community, stand up for what's right. And, you know, our church needs to, we don't bow to the culture of the day and, and we don't bow to whatever the, the government is thinking that we ought to do. The government has has absolutely zero authority over the church today. And Christ is the head of the cornerstone. Christ is the head of the church. And and Christ has given us our marching orders and dictates and in, in what we do. And so let's Let's do what we're supposed to do and let's stand and, and let's be what, what we need to be and, and fight the war that's going on and make sure that we're fighting the, the kind of war that God is going to be uh, honored and glorified in. And so those were, you know, some of the first things that, that uh, came through my mind this morning. And then I was reading in Numbers uh, chapter 11 and that First Chronicles came out and my devotion with Spurgeon and I was just talking about victory uh, in, in our lives as faithful uh, believers. And so it kind of took it further than that in my own, but <clears throat> it kind of goes right along here with, with Moses in Numbers 11. And, you know, the, the thought that I have in, in this battle that we're having that we all have our weak moments and you know there are struggles, and and yes, there are some times where where we uh, we make a bad decision, or you know, in, in in the weak moment that that we do something that later we regret, right? And and I, I'm I'm uh, uh, thrilled that that God is patient with us and in forgiving and long suffering when we do these things, and and here. Look at this in, in Numbers 11 and verse 10. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, <clears throat> Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people on me? And, 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 you know, here we are, and, and Moses sometimes tries to take on himself more than he ought to. And, and so now he's saying, God, God, you have, you have, a, a, you have afflicted me. I mean, you, you're, you're bringing injury to my life. And, and, and have I not found any grace and favor in, in your sight? And, and you have laid all this burden of this people upon me. And, and he goes on, he says, have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldst say unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father, beareth the sucking child, unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? When should I have faith, flesh, to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, give us flesh that we may eat. And I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of, out of hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. And I, I mean, he, he uh, look, he laid it out. And, and, and he's in, I can't do this. And as a matter of fact, I'd just rather be dead than, than try to handle all the weight and all the burden. And, and the thing that, that we forget 
is that it's not our burden to carry. And, you, you know, we, we carry a lot of burdens that we shouldn't be carrying. And, and I find that in my own life. I find many times I'm carrying burdens that, that aren't mine to carry. And, and they, need to be, they need to be turned over to God. And they need to be given to God. And, and, and trust Him and, and know that, that He can do and, and take care of, of all the issues that are going on. And, and you know, even, even in our own families, you know, sometimes we try to take on burdens that just aren't ours. And there there comes a time where as parents too, you know, I, I think in my own life, there comes a time where you train up your child in the way he should go, right? So so we we train them up. We we disciple them. We we consecrate them. We we give them to God and 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 then when they go out on their own, they're on their own. Now we can we can give them advice and and uh, we we can pray for them and encourage them, but you know the, their walk is their walk, and they need to be turned over to God. and And I think a lot of times we as parents carry burdens about our kids that we need to be rolling those over onto God and and giving them to Him. and And I say all this because I struggle with all these things, right? And then he goes on. And and so here he is, Moses has had a meltdown, okay? He's had a bad moment, and I'm not saying that he's right in what he did, okay? I'm just saying God exercised long-suffering with him. God could have taken him out of the picture anytime he wanted to, but he chose not to. But uh, here he had a meltdown, and then the Lord said unto Moses, Gather me 70 men of the elder of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them into the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee, <clears throat> and I will come down and talk with thee there. And look, <clears throat> the battle is the Lord's, and let God do the talking. And and how do we do that often? Well, let's just give it, g give it that you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> give it to God, and and read the Word of God, and allow the Word of God to speak for you in in your obedience in the things that you say counsel that you give. And, you know, here they are, they're crying out because they don't have any meat to eat. They're, they're mad and they're mad at God. And they just keep blaming Moses for this. And, and God says, Hey, bring them together and I'll talk. And, and so he does. And, and, <clears throat> and then it says, um, in verse, verse 22, he comes together, tells them, all right, all right, I'm going to give you the food. And the Lord said unto Moses, is the Lord's hand waxed short? A a a am I powerless? That's what God is asking. He said, am I powerless? I I is my hand going to be short and, and unable to reach out and meet the needs that you have? A a am I not able to do these things? And then he goes, thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Moses had a weak moment, but God stood up and said, you're going to see, all right? You're going to see that I'm true to my word. You're going to see that I'm, I will do what I say that I will do. And so I asked myself, do I believe this? Do I believe that God can, can turn this immoral country around? Yes, I do. Do, do I believe that, that God can, can stop the wickedness before it continues to take us in a place where we'll never get out of it? Yes, I do. I believe that. I, I believe that, God, can God give us a great revival in this country at any time? Yes, I, I, I believe that. And, and we, we need to be searching our own hearts and allowing God to search our hearts so that if he wants to start with us, let him start with us, right? And, and, and so, <clears throat> but we need to trust that he will do what he says he'll do. And, and, and he does. I mean, he's shown us that through all of the scriptures shows us the the promises that he has fulfilled and, and the promises still yet are waiting for us. And, and let's trust him and, and look to him and and know that that he can that he will do what he says he'll do. And then I was reading in First uh, Kings today and Solomon has just taken over the throne. And when we come to that famous passage where 
where God uh, comes to him and says, ask what I shall give thee. And so he says, hey, Solomon, I'll give you what it is that, that you want. So what is it that you want? And he said, give therefore my servant understanding heart to judge the people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge this, thy so great a people. And it said that the Lord, that the speech pleased the Lord. And, and so he said, and, and because of this, then, then uh, uh, behold, I've done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee, neither, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. You know, I, I think as I was reading this and, and, and giving thought to this, I, 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 just, I just want that kind of wisdom and understanding. And we're in a crazy world. And I, and I see things and, and, and people come to me with, with issues and, and, I, I'm telling you, we're the 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 water that 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 we drink of and the water that's around us today is so murky and so dirty because of all the sin and and it is and sin is dirty and sin is filthy and 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 we see just such a digression in our in, in our in our even our Christians' lives and the battles that we're fighting because of how prevalent sin is. I mean, it's all around us. And, you know, and, and it just, I, I think that we need to pray the same thing that, that Solomon prayed. You know, Lord, give us wisdom. Give us, give us a special understanding. And, and oh, how I wish I had more of that. And, and how we need to, to look for that. And, but he also told Solomon, he said, I'll give you riches. I'm going to give you honor. I'm giving you all those things that you didn't ask for. And it's going to be unlike any other king that will ever exist, the, the wealth of that, that you have because of what you asked for. But then he goes on and he says, and if thou will walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as a father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I, I, a couple of things here. He, he makes the statement. He says that if you will walk in my ways, keep my statutes and my commandments uh, as thy father David did walk. Was David perfect in his walk? Absolutely not. I mean, he made a lot of bad choices along the way. A lot of people suffered. He himself suffered for some of the things that he did. But here is God's testimony given of David. And so what do we do? Well, we let's walk faithfully. And part of walking faithfully is when we sin, we we have the 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 same kind of the 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 same kind of attitude and humility that David did when his sin was brought to his face and to his mind and 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 he and, and he went to God with that and and got cleansed of that. And and that's exactly what we need to do. And 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 let's 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 uh that's how it starts with wisdom and understanding. And then, but here, even Solomon in his wisdom and understanding, he ends up not walking the way his father did in so many ways. And, and, and it started off fantastic. I, I mean, the great things that were going on and, and how amazing it was. And, and, but all it takes is just one footstep out of line and then pretty soon you're way, way off point, right? So let, let's just stay, let's stay focused on him. And then <clears throat> I read, uh, I'm almost done here. I, I, I read Psalm 126 and it's reflection of, of maybe where we're at now. It, when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. I, I'm 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 not going to compare it because there's a, a lot of things that aren't nearly as bad in comparison. But I I think over the last 16 months or so, the the challenges that we've had has almost been kind of like a captivity. And I know it's not the same as what we're dealing with here, but but I do believe that there was some of that, and and, and I and and God allowed it, and and God did do that, but. Here it says that when we're coming out of that and we're 
and were returning from that, we were like them that dream. That was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. And, and then said they, they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. You know, I, I think we're having a hard time with as coming out of this <clears throat> with, with the laughter and the singing just seems like so much heaviness, or at least in my life there is. And, and it's hard to, to come back from that. And it's hard to get the laughter back and the joy back. And, and But we need to remember the Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. I, I mean, look at this. He says laughter. He says singing. He says glad. Then again, our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the... Turn again, our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. And that says, they that sow in tears. So we we uh, uh, weep over our uh, uh, sowing and, and we weep over the behalf of someone. We appeal to God's compassion and... and, and, and uh, we, we weep over the, the sin that brought us to this point. We, we weep over the, the joy that God gives us and, and the laughter that he gives us and knowing that, that he's got things under control and that it is going to be okay. And, and it's almost like a pressure relief valve, right? Where, where we, we can just, you know, take a breath and know that, that God's got this. And, and so along the way, we sow in tears and, and, and shall reap in joy. And, and and so let's keep telling people about Jesus. And I, who knows what God will do with us? And maybe it's right here that God starts a, a great awakening in our country. And and so let's let's pray for him, pray for him to do that. And and so what do we do? We sow in tears, shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. And as you bear the precious seed, you're not carrying it along and just holding it to yourself, you're taking that seed and you're throwing it out, right? And, and, and as you're doing that, shall doubtless again, come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And, and you know, it's, it's what we ought to be doing. <clears throat> and as we come out of this, we tell people about the joy of Christ and, and, and the laughter and the joy and the singing. And, and, and uh, the, the word joy in verse five is the same word that was used in in verse two for singing. I, I I don't know. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, it's a it's a joyful singing that we have, and because of who God is, let's never forget that. And even when times are heavy, and like Moses having his meltdown, and but let us not forget who God is and what God can do. And it's just a reflection on on uh, who we should be, and then. Uh, Acts 16, 27, we just need to stay away from the ungodly men and, and don't let them affect you and, and don't let them be ones that drag you down and, and we can witness to them, but we don't have to stay around that and be a part of that and, and don't and don't let them drag your, your uh, attitude down or your actions or reactions or any of that, right? And then know that God... God's got this and he'll give us the wisdom. And I was reading Acts 6, and I know I got to hurry, but Stephen, and this is what it says about Stephen. Stephen was full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. I mean, he was, he was um, a godly man. And there was these groups that came in disputing against him. We have that all over our world today. People, you know, believe the science, you know, and all that is, is reject God, believe us. Believe the government, we're God, forget God himself, right? I mean, that is exactly, and, and so, but then it goes on, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. And because of that, then they, they, they lied about him, and they, they brought him in front of the courts and, and had to pay people to say things against him, just like they did Jesus, and all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. You know, the, the, the thing that we need to focus on is, is our walk with God. Let's just walk with him. Let, let's, let's be powerful in that. And, and let's just keep moving forward. And let's keep trusting what God's word says. Keep applying it to our lives. 
and just see what God can do in our lives. So those are some of the thoughts I had today. And uh, Lord willing, we will, uh, that's loud, isn't it? We'll be back on here tomorrow. God bless you guys and have a great day.